Realize that people are investing by doing the wrong investments. Mm. People are investing but they're not getting much. People are people are not really, you know. What is the cost of something? You see, so for instance, somebody lives in the in, in in the US or in the UK, they want to invest into a farm and they have no basic knowledge of it. But they've heard farming is lucrative. They don't talk to anybody, all that they know is that farming is lucrative, they're going to invest into it. Now what happens is that because they have that thinking what is going to happen is they uh, just would invest into it without taking into consideration why even the land would the land support what they want to do what do, do they even want to do is the road more travel enough that they can even bring their goods out of where they're producing it to the market and all that but they just heard that farming is good so we need to do a lot of research. guys welcome to another wonderful episode of the entrepreneurship journey program today we are coming to you from Kate organic farms and consults we are here to share their story we want to know how they got into farming so dear aspiring farmer watching me or even an existing farmer wanting to learn something new can get to know some of the things they are doing that is thriving their farming and then the kind of challenges you probably may go through so that you learn how to avoid them even before you start that's a smart way of living so let's get into it Come on, let's go. Okay guys, so we are here now. We're going to see the CEO and then the story begins. Let's go. Hi, Hi. Nice meeting you. It's a pleasure. How are you doing? It's very well. Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Wow, Cat Farms. Yes. So, what and what are you into? What are you doing? Okay, so yeah, we do snails, we do mushrooms, and then we add value to mushrooms. So, with mushrooms, we start right from the scratch, that's wow. composting, to bagging, to cropping, and then finally to, to adding value to it. Amazing. And then snails also, we farm them from scratch, and then we add value to it as well, to the final stage. We're doing fish, but then here yeah, we don't have access to water 24-7, so I don't mean we're not doing much, but then we are buying from farmers and adding value to Brand it. New, okay. Yes, and then uh, we started a bit of insect tree also to help animal farmers, like uh, fish farmers, poultry farmers to, to supplement. To do a bit on the farm. Yeah, we started a bit, but that is not well developed, so we don't want to take it there today. Ah. Next time, you come in and take <laughs> videos time. on those All ones. right, so yeah, what you talk so. about? Farming the snails from scratch, it doesn't yeah. mean you use the eggs, do you? Yeah, so we have got a breeding snails, that's where we started it from. You have some here? Yeah, we have then some here. Let's take a look. All right. Okay, so having been in the snail industry for some time now, have you realized um, we want to look out for ways that people can still farm the cost-effective way, but then a way that really works. And so you realize going forward that, okay, we could do galleries, we could do greenhouses, but not everybody has enough funds to do greenhouse. So in your small backyard that you have, you could still do snow farming there using some of these methods. Wow. So we started, actually, when we started the farm properly, uh, when we started the farm in Dodoa, we were doing boxes. Okay. Then gradually we moved from doing boxes into doing um, something like this. So what's the name of this? So thing? this, we call it galleries. Oh, okay. Now this whole stretch is able to take up to 1,600 snails. 1,600 snails? It, yes. Wow. So and it's, how, it has how, eight chambers. Each chamber takes 200 snails at a time. And so the whole idea is that even if you have, don't have enough space in your house, and then you have just a stretch like this exactly. by your, the, by, uh, behind your house, you can still do snow farming commercial. Because if you're doing 1,600 snails, it's not, it's not backyard. Exactly. You're doing commercial. Yeah, so and it could be even three or four more yeah, decks. Yeah, you could even make it a story. Exactly. Wow, so yes. just this stretch, yeah. if I'm to go into it, how yes. much will I need to, I mean, get this structure, Okay. and then how much do you estimate I can make when they, when they are ready? Yeah, so this actually costs us, uh, the only, the most expensive part of it is the net, the net which we use, which is the shade net. Mm. Now this absorbs 60% of the sun rays this wow. type of net here. Yeah. So what it means is that you could do it in the backyard without even having to put an iron sheet mm -hmm. on top of it. This will still protect your snails. That's the, most, the only um, expensive part of the wood. It's not that expensive. So, okay, with this, we spent 
uh, four thousand two hundred to put up this. Because of the, the cost net, of the net. Exactly, the net, the wood, the workmanship, and everything. Mm. Yeah. So at least, but you could do one, you could do two, you could do three, you could do as much as. You can, can you even can. start, and then the exactly. proceed from the first can help you build. Exactly. More. Exactly. Okay. And then the and getting the snails, the the breeding snails. snails. Yes. Are they so, expensive? No, we have some as low as five cities for one. Oh wow. Yeah. So, the and. The interesting thing is that snails are hermaphrodite. Okay, so if you start with two snails, they are going to meet, they are going to lay. If you start with ten snails, they are going to meet, they are going to lay. Wow. So you don't really need, uh, unlike other animal farming, where you will need the male and the female to cross, mm. and then you have to do some gymnastics to, you know, get yeah. them to cross. Here, yeah, nothing like that happens. Wow. Once you put them together in the in the confined area, they start mating, and then. You start your farm from there. Amazing. Can yeah. we take a look at some of them? Sure. So here, uh, so here, this is where we do our incubation. So you could see some eggs in there. Yeah, I think I saw. Oh. Yeah. Some of them are already oh, hatching. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so this egg. Yeah, this had egg. Oh, sure. So you mean this egg? It's what hatches. It will break and then the, the snails. Exactly. Oh wow. So this each of them is able to lay a minimum of sixty eggs. One snail. Snail like this. Yes. Can lay, lay about sixty eggs. A minimum. A minimum? Yes. Wow. But you can go as far as much as laying hundred, one twenty, one fifty eggs at a clutch at one time or just one particular time. Amazing. Yeah. And is there any sand at all that works with them? So here we use loamy soil. Loamy soil works best mm -hmm. for them because of its uh, capacity to retain water, mm -hmm. and then also it's able to, you know, uh, hold them about, yeah, uh, a lot of moist as compared to the sandy and the clay soil. Yeah, nice. yeah. So this is what we uh, we use. so that, that's what we recommend to other families that have been working for and that let's use. Um, Loamy soil because the snails will still feed on the soil. So when the soil is fertile, they feed on it and then get the nutrients that they want, exactly. as well as help the snails to survive properly. Exactly. Yeah. So why do you put the leaves? On yeah. That? So they live. You know, every any any animal wants a hiding place, mm. and so when we are bringing them into a confinement, they should be able to create a hiding place for mm. them. So the leaves serve as a hiding place okay. for them where they can easily go and hide exactly. during the day. You know they are nocturnal, so during the day they are not active. Mm. So they need a place to hide and then in the night right. they come out and oh, then wow. feed and then uh, do all the activities. What do you they want feed them with? So basically we feed them with greens. Anything food stuff, green? Anything green. Fruits, wow. vegetables, yam peels, cassava peels. And then here, going forward, we also realize that during the dry season, you know, we are doing a commercial farm. So we can't say that it's dry season and we are not getting these greens anymore. So we are allowing our snails to die. So we developed what we call the snail formulated feed. Where we use maize, soya beans, oyster shell, and then some other ingredients. Wow. We mix them up and then we give it to these snails. And over the period, we realize that when we give them the, the feed, one, it increases their, their rate of growth, their growth wow. period, and then two, their uh, rate of um, egg laying. So wow. a lot of research went into it wow. to come up with uh, some of the things that we do. In fact, everything that we do here is research based. Uh, fortunately, I would say I have three more graduates as part of the management team. Okay. And so when it comes to research, we take research on a different level. Wow. We research it first before we try to implement it. So everything that we do here is research based. We have our facts right so that we don't do things just in the house. But then this is a pure, we are trying to be a commercial farm. Exactly. And then it's, it's, good. it's more of a science based farm. Wow. So we don't just pick anything and then bring it's it to the market or no. Amazing. Yeah. So this, um, the feed you formulated, is yeah. a, do you sell to some farmers oh, yes, if they we want to? Yes, we sell to other farmers if they need it. We teach them other, other farmers if they want to, um, they are struggling with the feed, we are able to teach them on how to prepare their own feed to supplement uh, the vegetables and food mm -hmm. they give them. Yeah. Yeah. So at what point do you remove them? From this case, or they grow here to so itself. when they're about uh, a month to two, maybe mm. about two months, you move them into the greenhouse. Okay. So that is where we do the fattening. Mm. So we allow them to start growing, and then from here, we move them into the greenhouse. So when are they ready for eating? 
So usually from a year going, so like these sizes, for instance, usually it depends on the season. So uh, these sizes are the breeders. Okay. But when uh, during the dry season, consumers don't even really care about the if about the size. Buy, mm. Some even smaller than this, they will still buy Whoa. to consume. Yeah. And at this point, yeah, some of them are one year, eight months, nine months, and then they're ready to. Oh, so it's not a month old, uh, like three months, six no, months, something. No, no. Snail takes a longer period to grow. Unlike other animals, it takes quite a longer period to grow. And I think uh, nature made in such a way that because uh, they lay much, mm -hmm. it slows down their, their rate of growth so that at least they can be that balancing mm -hmm. in the ecosystem. So I think it, it's something I've got. When they are when they are ready, they are already planted. Exactly. So, so you said this can take thousands. Six hundred. So each chamber takes two hundred. Two hundred. Yes. So oh. if they lay beyond the thousand six, what do you do? No. So the six uh, the thousand six hundred is for the breedings. Okay. So for the eggs, it can take more than ten thousand eggs. So mixed yes. with the breeders. Yes. Wow. Yes. This is good. This is good <laughs> business. Okay. So this is the greenhouse. Yeah, this is the greenhouse where. Uh, it takes a lot of the snails. Oh, so here, at each point in time, if I this what some that we picked out to go to a client, it's able to take over eight thousand snails at a time. Oh, so they are. On we have snails here. Hey. Yeah. So there's snails all over the place. Wow. When we move them from the back there. That's after two weeks. After two, two months. months after yes. two months. We bring them here to for, so that they get used to this environment also. So we mm. put them in these cages for another um, one month. Then we open it for them to crawl out themselves. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you don't put them down yourself. They, no, they come out themselves. We open it, then they will come out. Oh, I see one trying to get down by itself. Exactly. Oh, so I see. Open it, and then they would start moving out. Wow. Yeah, by, the, by themselves, yeah. So the gallery is empty now? We have, I think we should have some juveniles in here as well. So these are what Now if you are coming, you have to be sure you don't exactly. step on a snail. Woo! As you step on the floor, you might step on some snail. Exactly. Yeah, so oh, beautiful ones yeah. in there. And then, oh, so, so this one the, is there then? Some of them, you can see who die as a result. Wow. But you're really utilizing in this case. Exactly. So, here are snails all over the place. Wow. And this is able to take over 8,000 of these snails. Uh, because, of the, like I said, I think nature has its own course. So, mm -hmm. uh, other snow farmers, you know, there are people that will complain. Some of them definitely would die. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, what you need to ensure is that the majority of them is surviving. Okay. So, once they're ready, you will take so them out the... and then. What's the rate of loss after okay, so the eggs have hatched? We usually do 80%. Okay. 80% rate of um, hatching. And then we have another 80% rate of survival from um, the hatching stage to, to maturity. Wow, 80% yeah. is good. Yes. yes. So now we are trying to, uh, we are doing some research to try and see if we can um, have an incubator for snail eggs. Wow. Yeah, where we can have. You know, we are studying the temperatures under which they, they are able to hatch. So yeah. once we are able to, we are convinced with the results we are getting, then we can develop an incubator mm -hmm. for hatching um, egg, uh, snow shells. So the production snow eggs. rates can be higher. Exactly, because wow. as you can see in poultry farms, poultry, the poultry industry has, has um, um, an incubator for hatching their eggs. Exactly. We should have a similar one for, for snow, so for we can snails. increase their rate of hatching. Wow. Let me be careful before I step on. <laughs> wow, so yeah. why the contour red leaves? Yes, interesting is that we grow what the snails will feed on within. And so it wasn't like this anyway. Initially, we used wood for our structures when we came because we didn't have enough fans. So we used wood for the structures and all that, and we planted the stuff in it. So that's where, where these uh, plantains are. Well, so we did the first greenhouse using wood and then but that wasn't going to be sustainable because with time the wood will break and all that and then 
we are having some of the um, snows moving out because of some of the cracks and all wow. that. Yeah, so we have to convert it to this. So they, we grow some of this stuff, contumere, boko boko. Um, you can see some plantains. Plantain leaves. Yeah, so we grow all of them in and then. Okay, I yeah, see some of the, the boko boko. This boko boko. Yes, so and if you can see this, you see it has been eaten off. So this is as a result of uh, it's a snow that chopped it off. Whoa! Yeah. The, hey, do so they, they have will chop very. Whoa! They will eat it and then it, break, it breaks down. Then they finish it up. So once the stock is there like this, they will be feeding on it until it breaks on the floor. Then they'll they will finish, finish it, it up. Yeah. So that's how they feed in here. So unlike in the galleries where if you realize there's a um, there's a container that we put feed on it. There, here we don't have such thing. Yeah, they feed on their own. So all that really matters is that we are able to give them enough, uh, we, are, we have enough of the uh, materials that we've planted in and they will come wow. and feed on their own. Yeah. Wow, well, I never knew snails have teeth. They have. <laughs> they have over 300 teeth. But they, have more than, they have more teeth than humans. And they have more teeth bars than humans. So Whoa. what humans cannot eat, snails can even eat. Amazing. Ex yeah. They're this interesting creatures. Good. Yeah. This and is good. Uh, come to talk of the benefits, it, it, really been, it, it has become one of the most beneficial uh, commodities in the Great Value Chain at the moment. Um, the most expensive part of it, which everybody will tell you, is the, um, the slime, which really sells more than, a, more than good on the international market now. It's used in the cosmetic industry. Mm. It's a very, very expensive commodity, but the last time we checked, I think, I did it from five mil was going for over two thousand six hundred dollars. Whoa! On Alibaba, yeah, very expensive commodity. So and do you do you extract the the slime yourself? So here at the moment we do not have we do not have it. In fact, in Ghana nobody has it. The extraction machine, as far as I know, yes. Yeah. So, but I know in Nigeria there are some two or three farms that has the um, the extraction machine, so they're able to extract it. I think in Kenya too, someone is trying to get it, but in Ghana. As far as I know, I don't, but I don't know anybody that has it. Mm. So it's something that we are looking, we are hoping that the big guys who have, um, you know, some liquids would, would come into invest. the industry and invest into some of this machinery, exactly. uh, into the snow industry. Exactly. Because if um, this small liters cost that much, oh yeah. then... Yeah, it really sells on the international market. Wow. Yeah. What's the market for snails in Ghana? I would say it's huge. In fact, about 80% of our snails that we consume in Ghana are imported from... Um, Ivory Coast. You don't say. I mean, it. eighty percent of our snails are important from Ivory Coast, and we consume a lot of snails in Ghana. Let me stand here. Yeah, we consume a lot got out from of the... them. So, um, the market is huge. Yeah. We need more investment. We need more people to you know take advantage of it, and then farm snails as well. Yeah. Only that, um, it's sad that you know these and they are they are tiny creatures and so if you are taking care of them if you're farming them and they don't take um close attention you don't pay, pay close attention to it even if someone is doing it for you let's say you have a farm hand you still have to pay close attention to the person so that they don't take you for right because we are in ghana you know and uh the, the issues that most farms have has to do with farm hands. Mm. So if you don't take close attention, then you you anticipate that your farm hands will do everything right for you. You may be you may laugh at the wrong side of your of your of your mind. So, so you what to, do you what do you, when you say you have to take a close look? What yeah. do you do? So management. So ensure that everything that you're doing, um, you're keeping records, you're keeping track of everything that's happening. You are monitoring your farm hands to see what's up because unlike poultry farm or a goat farm where for instance if somebody's stealing uh they may make some noise and then you know you hear and they come <laughs> to the rescue here they are very silent exactly and so if somebody's taking them they can pick everything whether you notice so right now yeah when you come every morning do you open the leaves to see whether everyone is there or what do you do <laughs> so that's one of the challenges but once you put in this mechanism where so what we do is that once every two weeks we do a recount. Yes, okay. every once every two weeks we do a recount, and all the workers here have specifics that they do. Mm. So even though the the general things that we all do, 
that specific. So I know that you are responsible for are this. Are responsible for snails. So if we come and then we lost one, we have to account for exactly. it. So it's not like everybody is doing anything. Mm. So whoever is doing, whoever is in charge, if you allow someone to come in and bake it, it's your own case. You would have to pay for it exactly. exactly. So that's what uh, so these are some of the uh, measures I put in place to ensure that we are getting the best out of what we are doing. Wow. So who is Emmanuel Chine? Can we know a little bit okay. about your background and then your journey into agriculture? Okay. So yes. so Emmanuel Chine um, is a young graduate from the University of Cape Coast. I uh, completed in 2019, did my service in 2020, and then from there I went straight into farming. Now, before I completed, I had a dream of you know going be an entrepreneur, but then I was just testing the water. So in level 100, I went to learn, doing the long back, I went to learn about kente weaving. I know how to weave kente as well. Oh wow! I went to learn about kente weaving. Level 200, I went to learn about snow farming, doing the long back. In level 300, I went to learn about mushroom farming, doing the long vacation. So by 400, I was just trying to see which one would best fit one my strength, and then two, which one would best fit what I want to, how, where I want to get to in the future. And so finally, I settled on um, farming. And then when I settled on farming, I said, okay, so what can I do differently? Because um, farming is something I knew. You know, I grew up in the Bronga half of where my dad. Used to be a cocoa farmer. My mom was a farmer, so I know about farming. But then I didn't want to go the same angle that they did. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't rewarding it as much. So, exactly. and as a graduate, I didn't want to go into something. What that before would then? Happen. What did you read? So I read biological science. Okay. Yes. Does it have anything to do with agriculture? No, the relation is not that much. The relation isn't that much. Um, only that you are able to understand the biology of how some of these things happen. Mm -hmm. But then the agric aspect of it is missing. And so, okay, so that tells why you do more research. Exactly. Oh, I see. So everything that uh, we see here, everything that I do or we do, is more based on um, the fact that one, I want to ensure that whatever thing we're doing is biologically friendly to other living organisms in the area. Also, I want to ensure how we are able to sustain the environment. And then also, I'm looking. I also look more into how we can protect our environment. So this has been our main pillars, or my main pillars for, for the business. And so um, after service, I decided to okay go into snow farming. So I started with snow farming first. I did my small box while I was doing the national service. I did a small box and after the service, I started doing it full time. Then I went into, I added mushrooms to it where I'll buy some compost, 50 pieces, Hundred pieces, and I'll start doing it small, small. And by God's grace, um, it was yielding. So there were times that somebody would buy one kilo, one kilo was in Dodo, or the person would buy it in Kaswa. The transport alone was getting to about 30 cities, <laughs> and a kilo was 20 cities. <laughs> I also have to, you know, buy the trot and then bring it to the person in Kaswa, just be able to build a reputation mm -hmm. with the person. And currently, it's paying off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, I also I had access to some small piece of land where I started doing vegetables. I have good experience in vegetables as well. Wow. So we're doing, I was doing a bit of um, okro, I did okro, I did hot pepper, I did sweet pepper, I did tomatoes, I did all in a in bit to you know, gather enough uh, resources and then also experience. Mm. So at the moment we, are doing the, we have been doing vegetables, we are doing 10 acres of pepper in Afro Plains. Mm -hmm. We are doing maize, 20 acres of maize also in Afro Plains. Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, these are some of the things that uh, we do, uh, and that has been the journey so far to now. It's not been an easy, it's been a very rough journey. You know, in Ghana, when we are young guys trying to come up and then nobody believes in your dream, and even from family, family even things that you hey, work with university and then now you yes, say you want to go into family. <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't easy convincing. So at some point, I stopped convincing people. I said, This is what I want to do. I need to ensure that I'm succeeding, so at least they know that I didn't take the wrong path. Exactly. I took a, uh, the right path. And I also wanted to use myself as a living example to other people to look on and then learn that it's not always about a high scholar job. Mm. It's about how you can be innovative with some of the problems that we have. Mushrooms, even mushrooms, we import mushrooms in Ghana. We import snails, we import vegetables. That means that there's an opportunity for us to expand, there's an opportunity, opportunity for us to do more. Yes, but we need to be more innovative about it. We need to be see, we need to be able to see how best 
you know we can do things so that we can get the profit the kind of life that we want to live want. in this our current generation you know we, have, we want to live our life in a certain way yeah. the soft so, life exactly <laughs> so if we want it that way then um, if you're going to farm and then you need to look at how you can be more innovative to be able to live that soft life that you want to live and that's always been uh, our motivation or my motivation wow. so for how long now since you you, you completed 2019 yeah. and you jumped into it in 2020 okay 2020 time. so at most like three okay, four yeah, years almost three four years three now. four years yeah. wow and how did you raise money to, to start? yeah so like i said um it was interesting before, before i completed school i had to take some loan student loan oh i don't want to go home <laughs> because if I had gone home, this dream wouldn't have been where we are now. I don't want to go home. So I need to try and then find money to be able to do to, to, to be able to do these things. And so I had to uh, take a student loan to rent. So now when I got the rent, when I, I rented a place in Amasa, my it was it was just an empty room. It, my small mattress from school, my gas cooker and that was it in the room, you know. So that was where I was, I was living and then uh, there was this um, program that was going on, Graduating Agribusiness by AP Oak Foundation. So I jumped into that project and I think uh, this was something in me that probably I didn't even know. So I was made uh, the project captain wow. and so I had to move from Amasama to the project site. And so that's how I come. I also moved from Amasama to Dodowa. Mm. So that was where the project was happening. So I was there as the, uh, the project lead on that project, even though I hadn't, uh, I didn't have any experience anyway. So uh, from there, and then they also gave me out to the NSS, um, um, to the institution that I did the NSS to. So AP Oak gave me to Mensako Limited, where I did my national service, so that I can still have an oversight of uh, the project that mm -hmm. they were doing here. Yeah. And so whilst that doing that, the little little that I'll be getting, I will be saving some small small somewhere. And then when I so the small savings that I did was what I used in starting the snow, the first my snow first snow box, and the mushrooms that I got. So whatever thing that I was selling, I already <coughs> invested back into it. Whatever thing that I, I so I think I started with thirty bucks. The next batch I, I went to I went to for fifty bucks. Then it moved to hundred bucks. I was expanding the market, and I saw people that have been wonderful in my life. I want to mention uh, Mr. Felix Safo. He, as at the time I was doing the mushrooms, even though there were times that he worked with the um, Aquatics Control Authority, and uh, when I produce, even when he doesn't, he has no need for it. I call him, Mr. Safo, I have mushrooms, so he said, oh, you bring it. Oh. So he, I'll take it to him, and then he would buy and then give to his office because he, doesn't, he has no need for it. But he just wanted to support. He just wanted to support. And then one other, uh, Dr. Tetiakwa, these are people that had been with me right from the beginning. They were buying from me even when they didn't have a need for it. So just buy and then tell you, we want you to keep doing what you're doing. Wow. And so that was where the motivation came from. So I realized there are people out there who are looking to see that we succeed. And in fact, this current line belongs to Mr. Felix Safo. It's an estate where I told him when I had challenges, I told him, oh, I'm having these challenges, so I need a place. He said, oh, my brother, I'll give you two plots of land, pay it with the, with the, uh, in your own convenience, as any amount that you get, that you'll be paying it on a monthly basis. Oh, so thanks he, to them. Yeah, so he gave me the, pl the space that I can be paying it on a monthly basis. Wow. What doesn't really happen in the world. Yeah, yeah. so this has, that, I've, I've had tremendous help from other people to it. Some of them didn't come in fiscal cash, but then the encouragement yes. and then buying from you alone at least gives you the motivation to go on. So that was where it started from. And then that's a lot of mistakes that I did anyway, because as a young guy coming up and then, you know, there's no fund anywhere, there's no money to fund what you want to do and you still want to do it. I, I, I would see people who could help a bit. Somebody would say, oh, have some 2,000, I should come bring it, invest it into what I'm doing. Then I promise like 40% to return to investment. Can you imagine? Wow. And but the, the sad part, comes. the sad part was that, you know, these are people who knew I understood investment. I didn't, I was naive. So at least 
I was thinking that, oh, if even when I propose the forty percent to you, doing farming for a fair season, like just for three months, and I'm proposing forty percent, at least I was expecting that some of them would have guided me and say, oh. Emmanuel, we like what you're doing, but then I think the 40% is too much, or you don't go that angle. I didn't get enough. That's such. Um, uh, so they also brought, let's say, 2,000, 3,000, they'll bring it and still expect the 40% returns on investment within three, four months. Wow. And it put me, so going, going, it put me in a very difficult situation because there were times that I had a lot of people to pay, mm. there was no money coming. But you have a lot of people to pay, and Is it it was that the farm was not doing well. Up. There was so no market for the produce. It wasn't like that, you see. So uh, I think I I was telling you my story. So when it happened that okay, I had to transition from one location to another location, now you needed the money to do some of these things, and then also we are now I was now coming up, so putting up stories. So some of these money, you take it instead of putting it into the, the into the business, you rather put it into putting up some of the structure. So maybe I need a place to do the mushrooms. So rather I put it, uh, let's say I need to buy iron sheet, I'll go and buy iron sheet and then use it. Instead of rather putting it into, let's say buying more bags or uh, expanding the snow, rather I'll do it the structure so that I can be able to accommodate. So by the time you are done, you are, you are done spending the money. Materials it's just, exactly. <laughs> so there's no raw materials to for you to, you know, turn over and then get the money to pay. And it becomes a problem, you know. So, what it was advice do you give to aspiring farmers with such an experience? Yes. How should they raise funds? Yes. And how should they manage all this? So, I would say that um, the best is that you use your save. If you can save, you save. Or if you have people, friends, and family who are ready to support your dream, they can. You can fall on them to get you some of this support. The course. Um, in Ghana, if you don't have friends and family who are ready to support you, you don't and expect that somebody put an investment into your business, it's, it's difficult. And once at the beginning stage, even if they put their money into it, they are requesting for 70 to 80 percent of what you are what you are working on. What percentage should someone agree if there's someone ready to invest in them at the early stage? Okay, so at the early stage, the best you could do is be maybe 60 40. You own you still have about 60 percent. And which it will be difficult for people for you to get even someone to do it. Even if they've seen the prototype and then they've seen that the thing is still working, they will would even want to do that. So and I also say that if you want someone to invest into it, I was telling someone recently, he told the person that I'll give fifty percent of the returns. And I was like, tell him what to invest into. There's no guarantee that you're going to succeed in it. So if you if you want to tell the person fifty percent and you give them the timelines, when the time is due, whether you have it or not, you have to pay for it. You know, come after you and now nobody wants to his money but well, it's difficult to come buy money now so nobody's ready to give their money to you and then i'll be tell telling them stories they wouldn't agree with you okay so i'll tell the young and aspiring entrepreneurs that at best the little that you have manage that one and then go in small small because i tried it and in fact had not been that by now that been very far but because of some of those things that some of those mistakes that i did Anything that any small thing that you have, you get any revenue you raise, you have to go and pay back. Uh -huh. So, how long did it take you to? In fact, it took me like two years. Just about last year, I was able to finish paying everybody that I owe. Wow. Yes, and it wasn't it wasn't easy at all. It wasn't easy. So, I would tell people that if you want to go that angle, it's very it's very dangerous. You tread cautiously because we are living in a country where people do not really regard you for you starting small thinking that oh he's a young man trying to start something so let me help no 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 in ghana we don't have people business. like that there are just a few people everybody's talking business so if you're not careful you end up being at bankruptcy even if you've not started the business yes it's getting really interesting we are still here at Kate organic farms and consults We're going for a quick commercial break we'll be right back evergreen blessed enterprise is into cosmetic production we are into green cosmetic production where we use premium butters and oils to formulate hair and skincare products that are authentic and they are effective as well. Please subscribe, like and share this video. Let's promote entrepreneurship in Ghana. Thank you and welcome again. Let's continue the cat story. Let's go. 
Wow, yeah. that's amazing. So if there's an aspiring uh, entrepreneur seeking to go into farming, watching you right yeah. now, what are some of the factors you think are very important for them to consider even before they go into farming? Yes, yeah, so you look at uh, your growth uh, pattern, how you want to grow your business for the period, you should have a clear vision of what we want to do. Like I said, it should be much, it should be more innovative because um, for me, one thing that I always say for that, uh, what one thing that um, separates us from others is the innovation that we add to what we do. So we are not. It's not just about we are farming. We are adding value, but the value we are adding. What value are we adding? What's the proposition? What are we telling people? What do we want people to see us for? And that um, should always be. The, um, the, the, the cornerstone or the, the trademark of every entrepreneur who is trying to go into farming. And then also, you look at it like, uh, I take inspiration in what we do or what I do. That, apart from doing business, I'm feeding humans, I'm feeding people. And so I believe that it's a ministry that I've also been called into. And once you know that, you believe that, or you know it's a, it's a ministry, you want to do things right. You just don't want to do it things anyhow with the intention of getting money, but you want to ensure that whatever thing that you're bringing out is solving the problem. Um, you are not just doing anything for the money's sake, but you're doing things with the, with the mindset that, oh, Charlie, whatever thing I'm doing, you know, I'm going to save somebody. You should be able to cure somebody of some disease. You should be able to, you know, push somebody's immune system. You should be able to help somebody recover from what, from the depression or something. There's an aspect that we do. We added what we do agribusiness consultancy services. And having listened to stories of some of the clients that we have, we realize that people are investing by doing the wrong investments. People are investing but they're not getting much. People are people are not really, you know. What is the cost of setting? You see, so for instance, somebody lives in the in, in, in the US or in the UK, they want to invest into a farm and they have no basic knowledge of it, but they've heard farming is lucrative. They don't talk to anybody, all that they know is that farming is lucrative, they're going to invest into it. Now, what happens is that because they have that thinking, what is going to happen is they uh, just would invest into it without taking into consideration why even the land, would the land support what they want to do, what do they even want to do, is the road more trouble enough that they can even bring their goods out of where they're producing it to the market and all that. But they just heard that farming is good. So we need to do a lot of research. That's why I said here we do a lot of research. Because um, if you're farming, if you're taking farming as an art and not a science, you will be disappointed. Mm. It, should, it should be taken as just an art. It should be taken as both an art yes, and a science. science so that you, com you, you combine the two and then you're able to make profits out of it. But if you take it just as science or just as art, it will become difficult for you to and succeed. Break it down for us. Someone is watching. So, well, what is art and science <laughs> doing in farming? So, so what do you mean if you say farming as an art and farming as science? So farming as an art is when it's like you're just doing the old normal system of just farming. Just get up and do. Get up, do, and then there's no plan. Mm. You just wake up and you're doing something. Okay. And then the science is when it's just about research. You're not even implementing it. So you research, you implement, and then it becomes systematically, you know. Yes. Yeah, so you don't just do things out of vacuum. And starting also is it's not easy. Like I said, when I started, it was just me. All the thinking had to be. But by God's grace, now at least I have three other capable, uh, like as graduates who whose heads are also very, working so very all well. Together. So all together. So we are eight in number. Whoa. Yes. So I have the four of us. Myself with the three other top management, and then the other four also oh, full time. Sure. Yes, and then we have three who do part time. Oh. They come and go. Yes, so that is what uh, we've been. Doing. So, but as you as you grow, you realize that people are getting interested in what you do. They are now ready to give you their ideas. They are now ready to work with you. They are now ready to even invest into you. But when it gets to that point, don't be so don't don't blow your head. Don't be so rub, don't let your head get bloated because some of these investments are traps. And I speak from experience. Some of them are wow. traps. They Tell want to. They, yes, some of them are traps because they give you a very juicy deal. Oh, I have this land. Oh, I have this space. Bring. Uh, let's do. Let's say 50-50 or 60-40. And and oh. 
Um, so maybe if you, if you want land, because they mentioned the land, and in most cases they want to listen to your case first, and then the trap people, they want to listen to your case first, and then look at the loopholes in it, where they can use to get you. So they'll tell you, have a land. You go and then you put your investment, you also put your investment here in there, your time, your energy and everything. Along the line, they'll come back and they'll be telling you stories. They need the land or They need the land and then they'll tell you, oh, I think we have to change this A, B, C, and they buy it. You've already invested your time and your energy in the land. And so moving out will mean that you are losing everything. Wow. Yes. Some of them are traps. Some of them, once they get to know that you have the experience, they want to ride on your experience for this to succeed. So once they see that there's, a, there's something going on at their end, they want to push you away, then continue their own project. Amazing. Yes. So Ghana, the business, the business environment in Ghana is something else, especially those who have some liquid. If you are dealing with them and you're not careful, you become a slave to what they're doing. So you have to be very careful, you have to be very, you have to be very, very, very much attentive to what that every you information. Do uh, a written agreement or something? You will. You will buy, see, let's take for instance, you have an agreement with a person and then along the line you realize that this person you have the agreement with, like the way things are going, you know, he is just trying to cheat you. Here's the case, the person has power, the person has money more than you do. So you wouldn't even want to prolong it. You always say, okay, and just say, let me just pack my things and leave. By then you've invested all that you had in there. So how can one be very careful not to enter into such a trouble. You just have to open your eyes and your mind and then let the Holy Spirit, if you believe in God, let the Holy Spirit lead you because some of them are, are deep traps. Wow. Some of them are deep so, traps. Um, and let, don't get overwhelmed when they start mentioning the number because some of them will tell you, oh, I'm ready to invest. You know, like I said, you should have a clear vision. So let's say now for me, if you tell me you want to invest, I'll ask you, how much do you have? This is the worst of what I have, how far I've come. This is the worth of what I do. How much do you need? And I know that if you are bringing me some big money, is the money going to go into buying an autoclave? Is the money going to go into buying an extraction machine? What machine am I going to buy to expand the production? Okay, so it's not just about you're coming to invest and then the person will start 1,000, 2,000. That money wouldn't do you anything. It wouldn't do you any good. Because when they start giving you the thousand, the two thousand, then you start receiving it or accepting it. What happens is that you know these monies are not much. So maybe you're supposed to use it to, for some few things, but then you realize the money has been used for something else. Okay. But you should know that you record it as loss. So by the time you realize you've taken the thousand, 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 and now you've reached ten thousand, the money has become big. Paying back becomes big. You couldn't use it for anything profitable. Yeah. And that is when they will also start demanding for accountability. You know, so once they start requesting for accountability, and there's some, from, like I said, we started, we started names. We don't really have any cash anywhere to support, even your own living to support what you're doing. So any money that comes to you, probably you're not even paying yourself because you're not getting much to say, well, I'm taking this amount of money to pay myself. At the end but of you're the still eating from it. You're still eating from it. Then why don't you design a salary, even if it's more, and, and, probably. and bind yourself to it? Okay, my business is not doing well, and... I can only pay myself 500 CDs for the month. So that, you know, you plan your expenses, yeah. everything. Because if you say you are not paying yourself, but if you need para, you pick the money, mm -hmm. you buy. You need this, you pick the yeah. money. Oh, I'm not paying myself, but you're still picking <laughs> from the <laughs> Yeah, it's you true. You know, that's one of the things it's, that it's kills true. a lot of businesses. Yeah, it's true. Yes, it's true. But you see, sometimes um, you look at it from... You, the, the, the money you put in, in most cases, it's, it's more than what you take out. So myself, for instance, there are times that what you eat, what you drink, everything you put into it. And so when you're hungry, then, you, still, you go back you there. You just have to go back there and then <laughs> take some you and then <laughs> come in, you know. And like I was telling you, when I, I, came, I moved in here first, you saw the road that we used when yeah. we were coming. There's no access to water here. You buy water from town. There was no light here. So I came to live here and this place wasn't like this before. It was when I came here it was it was it was really it was damn, it was bad. Wow. Yeah. So and I lived here all by myself for like six months without light. Whoa. Yeah, in this bush. You see, so and when it wasn't going on well, all my workers left. 
the audience I was talking when I was moving from place to places. At each point when you're moving, your workers will leave you, they will leave you. The distance was that far? It wasn't even about that because all my workers, I rent for them. I make sure that my workers are you know, comfortable. I rent for them. So even the distance shouldn't be a problem because we are moving to a different location. If I need to, whatever means I need to get to get to, to rent for you, I will. But once they start seeing that, and what, that's one thing about employees, once they start seeing that things are not going well with you, they will leave you to ensure that you're always on top of your game. Soon, this is where we bring the curtain down on the Kurt Organic Farm and Consult story. I know you've learned a lot. Please don't sit on the ideas that you've gathered from here. Start working on it today. If you need extra help consultation, please pick their numbers in the description. Call them and they'll be willing to assist. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. Let's promote entrepreneurship in Ghana because they are the backbone for economic. Thank you.